Joining us right now to talk about the conflict in the Middle East, as well as about the upheaval among House Republicans, is former House Speaker Paul Ryan. He's a partner at Solomir Capital, also vice chair of Tenio. And, and Speaker Ryan, let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing right now, the situation in Israel first. Obviously, uh, you have experience with uh, what's been happening in the Middle East. What do you think of this? Absolutely horrific, Becky. Good to be with you. Uh, it's really clear that we all send a signal, especially our government, that we stand with our ally Israel. Uh, this is a terrorist organization. It's an act of war. I've been there a number of times. My wife and I have friends there. I was actually at Gaza when Ariel Sharon pulled out of Gaza back in the early 2000s. And it's been pretty steadily downhill since then when Hamas took over. Um, this is an act of war, and we have to stand with our ally. It's all imp the more important reason why we need to get our act together in Congress, because uh, I think eventually we'll have to backfill our allies with whatever it is they need. To, to, to save themselves, to protect themselves, and to prosecute this war that they now have on their hands. How hopeful are you, or aren't you, in terms of uh, a speaker being elected this week? I don't know that it would, it would occur this week. I hope it happens this week. Today's the conference. Tomorrow's theoretically the vote. Uh, I don't think they should go to the floor until they have. They need 217, not 218. Uh, I think it's important. I think 100 members or so signed a, a conference petition and they'll probably vote on this today, that they don't go to the floor until they actually have the votes for speaker. It would not be a pretty sight to see them go to the floor unable to elect a speaker. So I think they need to go to the floor when they have um, the votes to elect a speaker. You've got two you know, very qualified people, Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, vying for it. Um, but it, may, it, it very conceivably could take more than a day or two to get this done. But we just need to get on with it. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything pressing immediately that needs to pass. But I think it's important just for the world to show that our democracy is working, that it's thriving. I think what Matt Gates and these seven nihilists did was a total disgrace. Four percent of the conference overturned the will of 96 percent of the conference to fire a speaker for what? Doing his job. Um, if Matt Gates had his way, we would be not only in a defunctional Congress right now, but we'd be in a government shutdown. So I think it's disgraceful what these people did. Um, but we have to move on. We have to elect a new speaker. We got to show that we can walk and chew gum as a country at the same time, govern, um, and give our allies what they need in this very, very pressing time for them. Paul, you were one of the young guns who, who came with Kevin McCarthy. Is there a chance that Kevin McCarthy gets put back in that role? Because there, there has been speculation about that. I, I don't think so. Uh, I talked to Kevin this weekend. My guess is that's not going to happen uh, simply because I don't know if these eight nihilists, you know, are going to reverse their position or if the Democrats would reverse theirs. So they, they get their uh, way then. It would be then. the quickest solution. They get their way Say then, again, Paul. Joe? So, yeah, they get their way then. So uh, he's they, got they've nine. already gotten their way. Yeah, but not necessarily. But these people they got, need to change their minds. They, they're not people. Right, but he mm -hmm. could get 96 percent again. I mean, all you need are a couple of Democrats. Yeah. I guess that'll. I guess that'll that, never that means happen. Democrats. That means Democrats have to come over and say, we're putting, you know, party aside for the country, he, for the institution. I bet you he Look, has I'm an more, institutionalist. I think they should have supported him in the first place. Right, I know. But I bet you he has more. That 96 percent, I'm not sure. I guess maybe either Jordan or Scalise could get that. But just organically, I'll bet you he's got more support than either one of those gentlemen. But they can get Matt Gates. So Matt Gates is actually oh, yeah. call, calling oh, yeah. the shots on who the next speaker is. That's hideous, right? If this was a silent ballot, up. Kevin would have won. It would have been one person, Matt Gates, who has a personal vendetta against Kevin, in my judgment. So, look, I think it's crazy. It's cr they need to fix this motion to vacate, first of all. I think no matter who is nominated yeah. to be Speaker, Steve or Jim, the conference needs to step ahead of that and fix this motion to vacate. Because today's crazy tactic is tomorrow's normal behavior. With this kind of, you know, these kind of nihilists, these sort of entertainers in Congress, it's a one-way ratchet. Well, yesterday's crazy stuff is today's normal behavior. You didn't want so that job. E you didn't want that job either. You, you had you had to be no, dragged, kicking and screaming, and, and it, but but McCarthy's good at it and wants it and is good at it. So that's right. Know. That's right. Yeah, I enjoy, look. It was meaningful. I'm glad I did the job. I did it for two terms. Uh, it was. Ext I'm very thankful for having the opportunity to have done it. It wasn't what I was looking to do. Kevin is natural. He's built to do this. Born to do it. He was. He's good at it. And the Democrats, I think they saw an opportunity to take their best, our best player off the playing field. Mm. So, look, but that is what we got to move on. And if they can get, go back to Kevin, I think that'd be great. I just don't know that that's in the cards because I don't think the Democrats are going to change. And these eight people aren't going to change. So let's just get somebody we can get behind and let's fix this motion to vacate. Because no matter who becomes the speaker, over a period of time, this is, we're going to be back in the same place. 
some some crazy member who wants to get hits and clicks and entertain is going to do this for some personal peak. Look, I mean, all Kevin did was he stopped a government shutdown and he did a budget agreement with Biden that a majority of Republicans supported. Mm -hmm. So you can't govern this place, this institution with this with these crazy tactics being empowered with just a handful of people. He didn't, so he didn't, end, he didn't end an ethics investigation. That's what, that's what it was. He didn't end an ethics. We wanted yeah. him to, and he, he didn't even have the power to do well, that, supposedly. Speakers don't do that. That's right. Speakers right. Don't, don't call up the ethics chair and say, stop investigating you know, a wrongdoing. That's just not how it works. Hey, Paul, you, you're joining us from the Experts and Enthusiasts uh, Summit that, that you and, and, and Mitt Romney are holding every year in, in Deer Valley. You're bringing together a lot of people, uh, some presidential candidates. President, former President Trump is not there. What are you guys all talking about? What are you seeing? And I, I, I think part of this is your concern that there are not people working together uh, across the aisle in Washington, but working together in other places, too. We've been talking about this. It's kind of been a common theme this morning. What are your solutions? What do you see? It is. What's happening? That's what we, we this, is, this is the annual summit that Mitt Romney and I bring together, people together. We have, we have people from the Trump administration. We have Democrats. Um, it's mostly traditional conservatives. And yes, we invited the non-indicted Republicans, the people who have principles who I think um, could make good presidents who are, who are addressing the crowd today. But mostly we're talking about solutions. How do we get the country through a debt crisis that is clearly in the offing in the future? How do we address AI? How do we bring the country back together? How do we reduce polarization? How do we advance principles, solve the country's problems? So that's what we talk about here. And this is a, it's a great annual gathering of people who want to solve the country's problems, who are principled conservatives, who want to see conservatism not just tethered to you know, the populism of one person, Donald Trump, but principled conservatism that is popular, that solves problems. That's what we're talking about here. So we have a lot of interesting people you know, discussing. The good news in all this, Becky, is our country's problems are solvable. We, we are the nation's leading democracy, leading the free world, and we can solve all of our problems. But we're, they're piling up, and they're piling up and becoming unsolved because we have political paralysis, and we have this polarization that is, that is really stress-testing our democracy, and now we have these authoritarians, Russia, China, Iran, stress-testing the world. And I would argue that the Biden administration is very weak on these, on these things. I think these authoritarians don't take the Biden administration that seriously. Biden and Trump have both promised not to attack the debt crisis, not to deal with our debt problems. So we think we could stand better leadership in this country, leadership that actually runs at our problems, solves our problems, and brings the country together. And you can have principled conservatism that is inclusive, that's aspirational, and that binds the country together and, and doesn't prey on the polarization that is, that is you know, pulsating throughout this country.